I was maybe six years old, driving somewhere at night with my dad, and I took a little nap, and I woke up, and he said, where did you go? And I said, I don't know. And he said, well, what do you reckon sleep is for? And I said, I don't know. And he said, sleep's kind of weird though, huh? And I said, eh. And he said, sleep is a lot like dying, really, isn't it? And I said, I'm six fucking years old. That's kind of fact. When you think about it, I wanted to talk about this. I sleep a lot. And I try not to sleep as much as I do. And I know you body, your body wants a lot of sleep. And sleeping obviously extends your lifetime. But when you think about it, a third of your life, you're not even cognizant. You're just like out. Like you're not awake. You're not interacting with the world. A whole third. Because you're usually sleeping eight hours a day for the around eight. I mean, as you get older, you sleep less. And like when you're younger, you sleep more. But like an average of eight hours a day is generally how, how, you, how much you sleep in your lifetime. So that's a third of your day. Because 24 hours a day, 8, 16, 24. A third of your life, you're asleep. That sucks. Because you're immediately losing a third of that just because you can't do anything about it. Like it's just like you have to sleep or you'll die. Like it. And it's like sleeping is like that because you don't remember anything. It's just like, it's it's like time travel, really. Isn't that kind of weird? How sleep is just like, you, you're, you're out, and then boom, you wake up. I mean, I wake up, it's different for me and a lot of other people that have like sleep problems. I wake up like seven times throughout the night. How often do you guys wake up throughout the night? If you sleep eight hours, how many times are you waking up? Two, three, one, zero. For the people that say zero, this is the most prevalent to you. You fall asleep, and it's like, and you're up. And it's eight hours. It's like time travel. Boom. Eight hours have passed. And eight hours is a long... When you think about it, you're like, oh, I, I want to sleep more. I, I sleep six hours. I want to sleep seven or eight. Sleeping eight hours? A school day in high school is around six and a half hours. Say you start school at 8 a.m. You get done at 2.30. That's six and a half hours right there. You sleep longer than you're in school. And school feels like a fucking eternity. And you're asleep an hour and a half longer than you're in school. Every fucking day. If you sleep eight hours. Which is whack. The Greek god of sleep is called Hypnos. He has a brother called Thanatos, and he's the god of- Thanos?! Death. This is gonna be a jolly ten minutes. Sleep makes no sense. It leaves us completely defenseless for hours on end, and it probably isn't even for saving energy. Yeah, motherfuckers that are heavy sleepers, I- It depends what day it is, if I'm a heavy sleeper or not. But, like, if you think about it, you you ever ha you have that one friend where, like, you could, like, you could deadass slap them while they're asleep and they don't wake up. Like, you could punch them and they won't wake up. Those people would die in survival. I hate to say it. If you're a heavy sleeper, you're dead, dude. I, if you were, you're out in the woods, a bear's gonna fucking eat you, right? Like, I know humans are, like, the like we're not we're not the prey we're like predators generally but like there's still shit that would eat us in in like those times fucking tiger mauls you and you don't wake up you wake up while it's ripping your face off you gotta have that keen like a uh, uh, fucking uh, like a, a twig snaps and you just wake up if it's the summer i'm not gonna lie if it's the summer i might sleep nine ten hours it's just i feel i feel awake if i sleep eight if it's less than eight i feel kind of like tired throughout the whole day which i hate and then you can't focus that's what's ass either compared to just lying around awake sleep will save you about a hundred calories or a banana of slightly above average girth humans need about eight hours sleep a night but our animal friendly koalas prefer 22 hours bunnies about nine a koala is the most useless motherfucking animal on the world bro 22 hours how long does a koala live 13 years and all they do is fucking sleep? Dumbass koalas. Fine. Elephants need just four, and however badly your elephants day is pog. going, I would like to invite you to just enjoy this picture of an elephant calf taking a nap. I love baby elephants, bro. They're so cute. You ever see a baby elephant cry? It's the saddest thing in the world. For a moment. It's more sad than when babies cry. When babies cry, I'm like, oh, fuck! And it's like ear piercing. When an elephant cries, it's like actually sad. There. That's better, isn't it? No, me neither.
But whatever sleep is for, it's so essential that nature wired it into almost every half-intelligent organism on the planet. For example, dolphins. If they slept like us, they would drown because they don't have gills and they need oxygen. So they sleep unihemispherically, below the water, and one side of their brain sleeps while the other stays awake, then they swap over. Human death rehearsal, <laughs> excuse me, I mean sleep, is a bit more straightforward. Teeth, toilet, spot of hysterical crying. I sleep on my back, but you ever met a motherfucker that sleeps like this? You are deadass in the position that you will be in your fucking casket. Bro, okay, okay, now we're gonna go through some sleeping positions with my chat. Now we're gonna go ignore the chips ahoy. Fuck! Sleeping positions. I sleep like this, right? Or I could sleep on my side. Motherfuckers that sleep like this? You're insane. How do you lay face down? How do you breathe? There's people that do that. Like, how, how are you, how are you comfortable? And it's off to the land of Nod. Stage one, brainwaves slow down a bit. Stage two, your pulse will slow down and you'll begin producing sleep spindles, which are little bursts of brainwaves that, well, we don't know what they do exactly, but they look a bit, they look a bit like that. Yeah. My ear itches. Stages three and four are the deepest levels of sleep. Growth hormone is released, tissue is being repaired. Then stage five, rapid eye movement or REM stage. Your brain kindly paralyzes your body. Off topic rant. I think about this all the time and it's, it's going to make me seem like an idiot, but I always just find it fascinating. Fascinating. When you close your eyes and you sleep, your eyes still move. Like, I can move my eyes. Like, you can close your eyes and just move them and, like, look at things. And so that's why some people sleep with their eyes open. Because it doesn't matter. It's just for the moisture aspect and protecting your eyes. If I started dating a girl or some shit and then, like, like she sleeps in my bed and I, like, roll over and she's just like... <sighs> out face twitches, brainwaves go mental, and this is where about 80% of dreams occur. Anyway, the funny part about all this, of course, is when we're not dreaming while asleep, where do we go? It's just black. It's just oblivion. Every night, over and over, because sleep is just death being shy. Well, you do have to think, like, you always, it's weird when you remember dreams. I have an alarm that wakes me up as soon as I hot REM sleep so that I experience sleep paralysis every night. Are you crazy? What? Why would you want that? <laughs> have you already, okay for those of you that don't know what sleep paralysis it, it's like it depends what it is but like you can if you can have sleep paralysis where you wake up and you can look and you can't fucking move why would you willingly do that i've had that before you'll wake up and you'll literally be like and you can't talk like your eyes are open but it's like a solid like 30 seconds and you just can't move. And it's the scariest fucking feeling of your entire life. You have zero control. It, it, another thing that's weird is when when your dreams go away. Like have you ever have you ever woken up and you, you're like mid dream. Like you're dreaming and you're in your the middle of your dream and your story and then your alarm goes off and you're like fuck. I wanted to see what would have happened. And then 10 minutes later, you can't even remember what your dream was about. Or you wake up and it's your regular day and you're just like moseying on through and then like you look at like a clock or something or like some signal and then you're like holy fuck and you remember your whole dream from the night before like the entire thing it's because they sit so far back it's like if they don't take priority it's it's like it's like non priority space on a hard drive bro they don't it doesn't matter. Your dreams don't matter. Scheduled for arrival, say, 60 years from now. And it was so gigantic, it will Lucid out dreaming is fun? Oh my god. If I ever make this into a YouTube video, this video, this video, people are gonna realize this. If this becomes a YouTube video, the video's main point is not this video at all. It's just giving me something to talk about and me, me and my chat to interact about. Anyways, what the fuck was I gonna say? I don't remember now because people donated. I'm not gonna bitch about people giving me money. Thanks, right? But it's always at the worst fucking times. Oh, lucid dreaming. That's what I was going to talk about. Lucid dreams, for people that don't know, is when you can, like, control your dream, essentially. Like, you're you're awake in your dream, even though you're asleep. I, always, I have had three experiences of lucid dreams. And every motherfucking time, I always wake up 10 seconds after I realize that I'm asleep. And I fucking hate it. There was one time, I was standing under this awning. It was just random. It was like, holy fuck. I remember, I remember like looking and I was like, I'm, I'm asleep. I was like, I'm asleep. What do I do? What do I do? And I was like, I haven't had a lucid. It was like, it was like six months since my last lucid dream. And in my dream, I was like, what do I do? What do I do? I don't know what I should do. And so I just jumped and I started flying. And then I woke the fuck up. And I literally audibly said, fuck. 
when I woke up. Because I was like, you gotta be kidding me, dude. It was the first time I had one in so long. I once got sleep paralysis and it was dark and I thought a shirt on a chair was like a demon coming to kill me. When I sleep, I think this chair's uh, a person. And I don't really get scared, but I'm like, is that a motherfucker staring at me right now? And then I'm like, oh no, it's my chair. If, th if my chair was an actual person and they were just watching me sleep, number one, I would think they're a ghost. But I would probably pull one of these shit. I would sit up and then I would stare at them, confirm it's them, and then I would hop out of my chair and scream like a caveman as I tackled them. You know what's also weird? You never see phones. When was the last time you saw an iPhone in a dream? When was the last time you saw technology in a dream? When was the last time you saw technology in a, technology in a dream? Never. Never. You did? You're a liar. I'll see a motherfucking clock in my dream, but the clock don't move normally. I remember that. That was another time. That was the second time I had lucid dreaming. I looked at the clock and it was like... And it was like moving weirdly. And I was like, that's not normal. And then I was like, I'm asleep. And then I woke up again. And it sucked. The one time I had anything remotely relatable to technology is when I dreamt that I was a Minecraft character. After I played Minecraft for 15 hours straight my junior year in high school. Just oblivion every night over and over because sleep is just death being shy. If we got news that an asteroid was approaching, scheduled for arrival, say, 60 years from now, and it was so gigantic it would wipe out our entire civilization, we would probably go fucking nuclear. Riots, war, maybe end the world before the asteroid even arrived. And yet, there is an asteroid, approaching slowly in the distance, but it only gets one of us at a time, and we practice for it every night, and its name is death. With an asteroid, the whole species would be gone in a few days, probably. With death as it stands today, though, maybe we take comfort in the fact that even though we'll be gone, the world will still carry on without us. Just for fun, let's say sometime in the next few years you become a parent to two children, and that the average human generation cycle is about 30 years. Well, by the 2080s, we're two generations down the line. You are now a grandparent, and six humans have inherited your DNA. If humans have made it to Mars on November 10th, 2084, the colonists will witness the transit of Earth from Mars, the Earth resembling a black disk passing across the Sun. 2110, another generation later, and assuming humans have on average two children, your children have grandchildren now and you have 14 descendants. It's quite possible they attended your funeral. Don't worry, everyone got sm- You know, I hate to be depressing too and bring up another sad fact here. <coughs> You're probably gonna be forgotten in the next hundred years. Ah, I hated to say it, hate to say it. Do any of y'all remember your great-great-grandparents' names? No. Maybe your great-grandparents at best? Right when you hit great-great-grandparent, Every motherfucker forgets you. Everyone. You're just off the face of the earth at that point. You're probably in a file somewhere, but that's it. You're dead. This Twitch stream, no matter how success- Like, I always think about that shit. No matter how successful my dumbass gets on social media, 120 years from now, who the fuck is Joe Bartolozzi? No one knows, unless I become president. Then I'll be remembered. Unless I be- Or I own- Or I start my own country. Then I'll make my own history. Smashed in the pub afterwards and said nice things about your hair. The world population is probably around 11 billion humans, having jumped 4 billion in just a century. 30 humans Thank now you carry your genes. 2200s, now 6 generations, that's 126 descendants of yours. Lilu and Corbin Dallas will shortly be initiating a romantic relationship. And by the end of this century, still at 2 children per generation, you now have 2050 descendants. We can no longer even speculate what culture and technology looks like, so year 12,000 AD. 240 generations later. If sex is even still in fashion, you now have at least several million descendants. The star Antares has just gone supernova probably, and will be visible from the Earth even in daylight. Year 52,000 AD, 1500 generations of your progeny later, and the Earth's rotation will have slowed enough courtesy of them. This is relying on, on the assumption that your kids will have kids. Say one motherfucker. Say you, say you have a girl and a guy, right? They both have kids. Now you and they both have two kids. Now you got four you got four people that other than your two kids, you have six people that carry your genes. Say four of them don't have kids. The other two have one kid. Now there's only two left. Then that one doesn't have, I don't know if you're following what the fuck I'm saying. But eventually down the line, say say they don't have kids. 
Your genes die. The moon that will need to add a leap second to preserve timekeeping. Year 100,000 AD, 3,000 generations later, you might recognize the constellations, but they'll be altered. 250,000 AD, 7,500 generations later. Loihi, currently a submarine volcano in 2019, will have risen out of the ocean and become a volcanic island. 2 million AD. The Grand Canyon erodes to surround the Colorado River, if there is indeed still a Colorado River left. 50 million AD. Eurasia and Africa collide, forming an entirely new mountain range. 5 to 600 million AD. It's possible Earth's continents have fused back into a single supercontinent. A day on Earth has probably gained at least an hour. Our moon is now so distant, solar eclipses never happen again. Wait, our moon is going away from us? How fast? One inch per year. Hold up. People in the 1600s, right? How closer was the moon? Like, let's just say 400 years ago. 400 years ago times 1.48 inches divided by 12 because there's 12 inches in a foot. Oh, it's only 433. Th okay, the moon in the 1600s was 493 feet closer than it is now. Wow. That's not even noticeable. The sun is now 10% more luminous, meaning our oceans have begun to evaporate. Plant life is unlikely. 4 billion AD. The Milky Way, our galaxy, and our neighboring galaxy Andromeda collide, forming Milkomeda. 10 billion AD. The sun is now 256 times its current size. What's my opinion on Australia? You're descendants of prisoners. I'm sorry. It was a joke. It was a joke. It was a joke. Let me immediately say it was a joke. But historically, Australians were people that were sent there because they were prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> you were. I'm not saying you specifically, but your ancestors. It's a joke. It's a joke. Australians are cool as fuck, and they also sound funny. Funny in a good way. Oh my god, I'm digging myself a hole here. Australians, you're sick, all right? Oh my god, I'm digging myself a hole here. You sound cool. That's what I mean. Joe's canceled. He said Australians sound funny. <laughs> Galactic clusters will begin to converge, stars will collide, eventually stop the black talking. holes of the universe will collide with one another, amassing into a single super, super massive black hole, consuming itself. One quadrillion AD. It's also possible no big crunch will occur, and the universe will continue to expand indefinitely. In this scenario, the main points of interest for the next almost infinite period of time will be the decay of nucleons, that's protons and neutrons, beginning an era in which only black holes exist in the universe. I want to jump into a black hole so bad. Okay, if you know anything about fucking astronomy, you know about black holes. I want to jump in a- I want to jump in a black hole so bad. Just to know what's in there, dude. Just to know. I know the likelihood of my body being ripped into a million pieces is is the likely outcome. But what if it, what if what if it's not? What if there's something else? Uninhabited, uninhabitable, barren, perpetual, limitless dark, with no recourse to the fecundity that once teemed within the boundaries of creation. We all must have gone through that phase as Penguins. a kid when it hit us. Well, people die eventually. Oh. Yeah, a lot of people don't real. I like. I don't know when the first time I realized, like, fuck, people die. Cause even like, bro, like I had, like I was probably like seven, and like one of my relatives died, and like, even then you're like, you don't really get it. I feel like probably around like fifth grade. I feel like fifth grade is when you under. I feel like fifth grade is when you legitimately understand the concept of death. And then I think you je I think you think about your own death probably around like the for the first time you can realize like oh I'm going to die and you actually think about it. I would say that's way later. I feel like there's a lot of kids my age like I know people that are I'm 19. I know a lot of people that are 19 that have never thought about when like never thought about death ever or when they're going to die or how they're going to die or anything of that sort. Oh god. Some of us, including your pompous narrator here, never recovered from that phase. It is simply too much to live as the only animal that knows its projects and loves and lifetimes are limited, and that is a notion too wide and spiky to fit inside the head. The things we will miss after we're gone, the parties, the births of humans we would come to love, or the walks, or the hugs, or the plucky steps into the dark, our is that space we take yet. Homo sapiens, yeah right, homo nihilus, more like Too the bad I'll live forever? Yeah, you're just built different. The animal conscious of its approaching demise, and conscious of the world's approaching demise too. I suspect you, like me, have run into these people in life who are terribly clever, and yet terribly broken. But there is a middle way, between denial, I'm so fucking important, look at my bank balance, etc., and despair. No I do think a lot of people, a lot of people think about the materialism of the world more than they should. 
And like, I always wanted to be like, oh, I want to have a nice car. I want to have a nice house and all this shit. I would advise you, and this is what I want to do. I like, I, everybody wants to be rich, right? Like I want to be rich one day. Everybody wants to be fucking rich. Everybody wants to have money. Eh, that's fucking great. It's what you do with that money on whether or not you're going to be happy. Everybody always says, if you're rich, you're happier. And yes, being financially secure makes you happier. I would say if you're rich, don't waste your money on all this other shit, right? Waste it on experiences. Spend it on experiences. And I know spending money on on trips and traveling and doing all this shit is, is money that is burnt. Because there's no investment of that. If you buy a car or you buy something, that can appreciate in value. Or it might depreciate, but it'll appreciate slightly. Whereas if you buy a trip to the Bahamas or you go to fucking Switzerland or Kazakhstan or China or wherever you go, you're losing that money because you're just spending it and it's going to other places. But realistically, that's what's going to make life interesting. Going to places and doing things, even if you don't like traveling, I hate to say it, but that's the experience of the world. That's what's going to make your life enjoyable and you to have a fun time in life in the end is by going and seeing the world. And seeing how everybody is and, and seeing everything before you die. Rather than s wasting your entire life saving money. I'm not going to say you should save money, obviously. But don't spend your entire life saving money to buy your one dream car from when you were 12 to drive it for five years and then die. Like, it's pointless. You want to spend money on things that are, that are going to bring you joy. If everything was forever, would that really change so much? 80 years or a trillion? Beer would still taste just as good. Wasps would still be pricks. Fuck you, wasps. And maybe tomorrow we'll kill aging and death and stay up infinitely past bedtime. But as it stands today, we don't have the science yet. And so God-fearing or not, we have to find some way of making peace with the thing. I'm doing a little callback to when he said we wouldn't have to sleep anymore. Um, now, I'm not advising the use of drugs. Don't do drugs, kids. But... It is interesting that when people take meth, they don't sleep for days on end. I'm not saying do drugs, right? But I'm just saying it is interesting that, you know, you can stay up for, you know, weeks. And then you start losing brain functionality, though. That's, that's, that's where the downside kicks in. You start losing brain functionality, you die. Yeah. No, 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 no. No. An experiment conducted across the entire planet, conducted across all of history, called us. How many of us have been and gone down here since we became homo sapiens? Billions at the very least. To have stubbed one's toe, to have heard a new word and looked it up, to have yelled at the GPS as though it's the GPS's fault you got lost, to have watched another human blowing their nose or picking their teeth or something equally disgusting and quietly thought to oneself, oh fuck, I've fallen in love with you, haven't I? Just to have been anything, what a weird honor. If sleep is just death being shy, then waking up is atoms being miraculous. The fact that for about 80 years, atoms know they're even atoms at all, courtesy of being humans. Birth, death, the silly bit in between. If none of it has any ultimate significance, if on a cosmic scale, none of it matters. A lot of people always ask me why, why I'm a philosophy major. And it's just like the why. The why in life is just always so fascinating to me. Like, why are we here? Why is life like this? Why do we have like arms and hands? It's it's just like the question why just always fascinates me. I don't know why. It just does. I don't know why it does, but it does. I always get into these states uh, of mind and it's very hard. I try to actually get into them, but it's very hard. And it's this weird feeling I have where like I'll think about certain things. Like just life or I'll think about my own. What, what I do to usually get into it. And this is very hard to explain, but I'll think about my own death and then I'll think about viewing myself in a grave while I'm not alive and how the world will continue even though I'm dead. Everything else is still running, but you die. And then I get into this weird state and then I can actually think about like philosophical topics. <laughs>